Rub up your engines! Well, here's some interesting electric car news. Canadians just did a study and they found out that even on a vehicle that only has about 80,000 miles, the battery replacement can be more than the car is worth. You lose power as time goes on. One Canadian had a Nissan Leaf and it was supposed to go 121 kilometers, which isn't that much, like 70 something miles, I guess. But then he found out that it only goes about 75 kilometers now if you run the heat or the air conditioning. So he decided he's going to get another battery. Now in British Columbia, they become one of the most electrified vehicle market in the world. It's a bunch of them out there. Now they're starting to wear out. They have a hard time finding them. The dealerships gave them quotes of anywhere from, listen to this, to replace the battery. $9,000 to $30,900 to replace the batteries in the car. He had a hard time finding one, go around, and then finally Nissan Canada said, yes, we can replace it for $13,500. Since they can't even find them some of the time, guys are taking replacement ones out of wrecked cars. Oh great, you know, you pay a whole bunch of money and you're getting a battery out of a wrecked car for, you know, anywhere from nine to thirty thousand dollars. And another Canadian had a Chevy Bolt, right? And the replacement of the battery, this was a 2017, so it was you know, four years old. The replacement of the battery was 40% the price of the car when it was new, which is more than the car was worth. So you think these things are economical? Ha ha ha. No, they aren't. You can spend a whole bunch of money when that battery goes bad, and it's going to go bad. And it's not going to have the range that they claim, especially as they age. It's all fantasy BS that they're throwing out to try to get you to buy the things in the first place. And of course, it's colder in Canada. The heater, the electric heaters, going to wear the battery out even faster, give you in shorter ranges. When you recharge a battery in a cold environment, it doesn't charge fully. And it also doesn't have as big of a range because it's lost power. Where the rubber meets the road, Canadians are finding out maybe not such a smart idea buying these electric cars as they stand today. Well, as usual, the Teslas are crashing again. Uh, it turns out that a guy in Yosemite in a forked road, his car is on autopilot, and it crashed into a boulder. And then when the Rangers came, they said, you know, you're the fifth guy in a Tesla to crash here. <laughs> Obviously, the computer software can't figure out what to do on a forked road. Now, so far, people found that they're tricked by the full moon. They think the full moon is a street light. Burger King signs. Now, the guy had it on autopilot on Yosemite, and he said that it veered off the road. He had his hands on the wheels, and he tried to re-straighten it, but it was on rocks on the side of the road, and it slid, and it ran into a giant boulder. And to add insult to injury, it cost him a thousand bucks just to have it towed to the nearest Tesla repair place because they're so few and far between realize there aren't that many of them out there so you think these things work obviously they do not computers are a long way from driving our cars around if they can't even understand a fork road i had a customer in houston that got rear-ended because it thought the shadow of the underpass on the highway they were going under was a truck or something it hit the brakes and then they were rear-ended because the person behind them was following and all of a sudden this car stops in front of him and the guy tried to step on his gas he did but it wouldn't go anywhere because it made itself stop it thought it was a truck in front of it the shadow so <laughs> long way to go people before we have self-driving cars so if you're going to yosemite in a tesla my advice is turn it all off and drive it like a normal car well if you saw the other day i was talking about pictures of thousands thousands of these Ford Broncos sitting in parking lots that they can't sell. Well, here's what a lot of the truth is. Ford wasn't talking then, but now they are going to replace every single Bronco molded in color hard top because they made them all wrong. <laughs> they're fading away. They're coming apart. They made them all wrong and they got to replace every single one of them. If you own one, they're going to replace it. But here's the real bad news. Let's say you ordered one. Now they said, well, it's going to be 2022 before you'll be able to get your vehicle. They got a backlog. The chip shortage is bad enough. Then they didn't build them right. Sometimes you cut corners too much when you're building things. From what I've seen, they already got two thin axles in the back. A little axle too thin. It's supposed to be an off-road thing. Hey, those axles are going to end up snapping or bending if they're that thin. They're thick for a reason so that they can take strength and not bend. You make them thinner, yes, cheaper to make them, and they weigh less, but they're going to break and bend faster. It's only common sense. As far as I'm concerned, this is probably the tip of the iceberg. That's just because you can see it. <laughs> People don't know, look at those roofs. It's horrible. You can see it. Well, imagine the internals you can see. So maybe if you're thinking about order, 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 maybe you're going to cancel your order. And Deluxe Dottie says, wait a few years to see how it pans out. Don't jump on a bandwagon. Look, this is the best thing since sliced bread. And you find out, hmm, well, this is moldy bread. I don't think it's better. 
Jerry the fairy says, I got an O2 Toyota Camry. I wonder about coil packs. I want to replace them all. The ones I have say Toyota part Denso made in USA. Online, I can only find coil packs made in Japan, made by Denso. Are they okay? Yeah, they're probably even better. <laughs> The Japanese stuff is always better as far as I'm concerned. It lasted almost 20 years, so what the heck. Them ones made in the United States, but you know, the Japanese ones, of course, are perfectly fine. Want to make sure that it's real and it's not some scam because you're looking online and a lot of times they say one thing and then the box comes in and it's something completely different. That's the only problem with buying stuff online. You don't know what you're actually going to get. I've gotten stuff from things that said it was original equipment and then I look at it and that's the name of the company, Original Equipment. <laughs> They're not the original equipment Toyota ones. They just took a name and cheated. So buying online is always a bit iffy. I like buying them locally myself. Then there's a problem. You just go back. Nope, they don't work here. Give me my money back. I'll go someplace else. When you're dealing with stuff online, there's always that gamble of you don't know if you're going to get what they say they're going to send. And then sometimes you can't return them and you're stuck. Daryl McKee 157 says, I just bought a 2021 Wrangler. How can I make it last forever? Don't drive it. <laughs> then it'll last forever. Well, I want to get Scotty advice, he says. Gotten a Stellantis product. I got the 3.6 with the six speed. It is the ASIN transmission. All right, okay. At least it's got the Toyota transmission, right? But it's still the 3.6 Chrysler Fiat engine. Basically, don't listen to any crap they tell you. Change the oil and filter every five, 6,000 miles. Don't overheat. Take care of it. And don't take it off road if you want it to last forever because then pieces break off. If you're going to do normal driving, keep your fingers crossed, baby it, change the oil a lot, and do a lot of praying, and maybe it will last forever. I kind of doubt it. Everything wears out eventually. Jeep products wear a lot faster than they used to, but I mean, you bought it, take care of it. I mean, the transmission might last forever, but you can't ride on the transmission itself. <laughs> My ID Mike says, I got a 2006 printer Mercedes diesel with turbo, 67,000 miles on it. How reliable is it? 67,000 miles is nothing for one of those diesel engines that Mercedes makes. The only problem is they cost so much money. They're very expensive. They can last a long time. I have customers that buy them for their businesses. If I buy the Ford van, it's going to fall apart long before and then, even though it's cheaper, that if they look at the how much they spend per mile driven, they actually are better off with one of those Mercedes Sprinter vans. And everything eventually wears out, but with 67,000 miles, that thing should have a heck of a lot of time left. Just change the oil regularly. I have it serviced once in a while, but they can last a lot longer than what yours has on it for sure. Frout Ranger 25 says, is it worth it? I have a manual transmission, 94 Chevrolet Beretta Z26, 160,000 miles doesn't run. Is it worth to try to get running again? Depends what's wrong. Now realize, that is never going to be a collector's item. I looked it up at Edmunds. It said it's worth 105 to $900, the whole car. <laughs> But if you do my video, fixing a car that cranks but doesn't start up, and you can fix it cheap enough, go ahead. It's a standard transmission. They're reliable. You know, it might last quite some time. You never know. But don't put a bunch of money in it since things worth maybe $100 to $900. It's not worth anything. So it depends what do you want. You want a knock around car if you can get it running cheap enough? Sure. But don't put a bunch of money in it because the thing is worth practically nothing. They were kind of an ugly body style that people never even liked anyways. And with that kind of mileage, 160,000 miles, it's probably near in the end of its lifespan anyways. At least, can you get it running cheap? But if you can't, sell it for scrap. Joe LaBox says, my son left his car parked in town, unlocked, a thief tried to force it. I have bought a new barrel for the ignition key. How can I replace that barrel? Do I have to take it to the locksmith? Will it start once it's installed? What should I do? When you stick it in, it has to sync with the system in the car. But, and this is a gigantic but, if the only thing you're changing is just the barrel, that goes inside, you can just change it. There's no sensor in the barrel itself. That's just the mechanical part that the key goes into and then opens it up so you can turn it. If you're not changing any of the electrical components, you should just be able to put it in, start it, and drive away. Program is needed if you get a different key that has to be programmed. If you get a new electrical portion of the switch, it would need it, but you're just replacing the mechanical part, and the computer doesn't give one iota what that is. That's just keeping you from turning the key without the right key in it. So this doesn't have any electronic components in it, so you should be able to just put that barrel in there and drive away. I've done tons of cars like that. I go to places like AutoZone and say, hey, you got uh, you know a key and tumbler for this? Especially like Toyotas and Hondas as they age and they wear out, and they say, sure. And you turn it, you push a little button, there's a little hole there, and you get like an ice pick and stuff it in, then the whole old one pops out, then you pop the new one in. Let's say you're getting a barrel and you're getting a key assembly, a barrel key assembly. 
then yes, it's going to have to be reprogrammed because that key has the immobilizer chip in it. If you're not using your key over, if, if that's the case, you bought a key and a barrel together. Any good locksmith can get your old key and he can get that new barrel you got and he can take it apart and make your old key work. Then you'll be able to start it right up. So if that's the case, hey, what the heck? Take your new barrel and your old key to a locksmith and say, make this key turn this. And any good locksmith can do it. I've seen guys do it for ages. You can even do it yourself, but there's a lot of little pieces in there. I tried once and I gave up and I took it to a locksmith and he did it. <laughs> so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.